Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about something which is all the rage in Hollywood and Bollywood. The GLP-1 inhibitors, AKA Ozempic, Wegovy, Monjaro. What are they, how do they work, and what do they do? Listen, no one is immune from the little things which Oprah's talked about, where she says that they take away the food noise. And for people who struggle with uh, eating and with maintaining their weight, and more importantly, with diabetes and other things, they've been a panacea which has really helped them. Today I wanna to discuss what the pros and cons are, how they work, and what they do specifically. But there's even more interesting things which I'm gonna talk about, where it's not just for how you look, it's how you feel. And I think this is gonna be an eye-opener for many of you. It was for me when I researched this article. So join us on the channel. So let's start from the top. GLP-1 agonists are not new. GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide. And glucagon is a hormone which is secreted, which actually increases the amount of glucose when you need it when your sugars are low. In the case of GLP-1 uh, agonists, they bind to the receptor and actually uh, block that to some degree. And they increase the effect of the insulin. So they decrease your blood sugars slightly Initially, they were used for diabetes in thinking that this would be another drug in the armamentarium for diabetics. But in fact, what they found in those same patients who took them, they had up to a 10% weight loss and hence spurred the use of GLP-1 agonists for weight loss. This is not a new series of drugs and they've evolved over the last 10 to 20 years um, from doses you needed to take twice a day to doses you took once a day to now doses which you take weekly in a subcutaneous fashion. And now they have even multiple forms. What is GLP-1? Well, it's a naturally occurring um, hormone which is secreted by your gut cells and uh, in the linings of your gut and basically acts to activate or diminish the effects of glucagon. It's a glucagon-like peptide which binds to the agonist. And in doing so, it reduces the amount of glucose and then the amount of insulin. Added to that, there's another class of incretins, which is what both of these hormones are now called, which basically do the same thing. How do they work? Specifically, what patients have remarked on is that they give you satiation in the brain where you feel full. How does that work? Well, centrally, they're decreasing your hunger instinct. And then secondarily, they're working on your bowel motility and specifically gastric emptying. So in essence, you feel full. Now we'll talk about that later because that same fullness can lead to some of the side effects of the drugs. Interestingly, uh, what was found was that there's a, uh, with the GLP-1 uh, agonist and with the GLP-1 agonist combined with GIRP, um, different effects were seen. And what was thought to be just initially weight loss, where people were eating less and what Oprah describes as basically the food noise was removed. She wasn't hungry between meals. She wasn't running to get that. And in spite of her being on all sorts of great diets, which normally would work with high protein, low carbs, keto, Adkins, all of that stuff, she was still struggling. And with these class of drugs, not just her, but Elon Musk, um, numerous celebrities in Hollywood and even in Bollywood, believe it or not. Um, the interesting part is now we're finding something even beyond that. And while some of these drugs were poo-pooed because they had significant side effects in the way of nausea and vomiting, um, diarrhea, um, all types of GI type symptoms, and then in the worst cases, pancreatitis, this, that, the other, and small occurrences. In fact, they were well tolerated depending on the dose you were in. The main outcomes which were seen were that the significant weight was lost by these patients. Now, weight loss alone is how you look, perhaps. And in fact, there was something called ozempic phase where they rapidly lost weight and the buccal fat pads, meaning the fat pads in their face, would get so skinny that they would look like Skeletor, basically, from the cartoon, and look like they're out of the camps. That can happen on any type of weight loss diet where you rapidly drop weight. But if done in patients under doctor's supervision for the right, um, either morbid obesity or diabetes, they lost weight in a very controlled fashion 
and were monitored, right? But here's the kicker. There's been three major studies which I saw which went beyond just the weight loss. The first study looked at patients with CKD, chronic kidney disease, and this was published in the New England Journal of Medicine recently in 2024. And what it showed is that in a cohort of 3,500 patients, that it, when you randomize with the treatment with semi-glutide, which is a GLP-1 inhibitor, well known as Ozempic or uh, for the diabetics, and Wegovy for the um, obesity indication, that the patients who received the drug versus placebo had significantly uh, lower rates of kidney failure and kidney associated complications. So here's a situation where it wasn't just affecting your middle metabolism and your glucose tolerance and your insulin secretion, but it was actually having an effect. Now we'll go into that a little bit later because there was a second study called the SELECT trial which looked at cardiovascular outcomes in patients with obesity and morbid obesity and uh, various other diseases, but not for diabetes. And what they found was that in that study with semi-glutide again, that there was a 20% reduction at two years in uh, all-cause cardiovascular mortality and morbidity, less strokes, less heart attacks, and less complications. And so this I found was ridiculously compelling in that the drugs aren't just working on the access of glucagon, but they are actually potentially working on inflammation. And that needs to be studied further. Now the other thing they say about these drugs is that once you go off them, that you will gain the weight back. And while that's potentially possible, there's another study which looked at these drugs all the way up to four years, which was in the SELECT trial as well as another trial, and what it found was they were safe to take, but more than that, that they had fewer cardiovascular complications and other outcomes differences. So the point is, they become a outcomes difference versus patients on placebo alone, suggesting that it's not just weight loss and that it's not just how you look that's being affected, they actually have a fundamental effect on the outcomes from morbid obesity and also from diabetes. So in the chronic kidney disease patients who had diabetes, it was shown that they had significantly less kidney failure and kidney complications with semi-glutide. And in the patients in the SELECT trial with obesity, it was shown that they had significantly lower cardiovascular complications at a significant period of time, up to four years. The next study which I reviewed looked at the comparison of semi-glutide which is a GLP-1 inhibitor alone versus terifisipatide. I can't pronounce it very well, but we'll put the name up. And that drug is called Monjaro. And interestingly enough, with that drug, its main indication was diabetes, not for obesity. They have not uh, done the studies with it yet. But with Monjaro, what they found was twice as high a weight loss potential at three months, six months, and 12 months. And so what they found is with Monjaro or tirifosipatide, which works on both GLP-1, which is the glucagon-like peptide agonist, and also GRP, the gastrointestinal-related peptide, which works on the metabolism at the intestine level uh, on glucose, Monjaro actually had a much higher weight loss potential up to 10% versus 5%, which was seen with the Ozempic or the Wegovy. Now look, none of these things should be done arbitrarily, nor should they be taken without a doctor supervising it because there are complications with them. But I think what we've seen and what I've proven in conclusion is that the drugs are safe. They do have side effects, most of them gastrointestinal with nausea, vomiting, uh, diarrhea, and gastric emptying problems. But what they also have been shown to do conclusively is that they can be used as a adjuvant for weight loss and used for long periods of time. So in patients who are otherwise at risk, and we've talked about this before, what is the risk of the underlying disease? 
What is the risk if you're morbidly obese with a BMI of greater than 35%? Well, there it's pretty clear that your risk in a 10 year period of dying could be as high as 50% versus the normal, right? And when you compare the complications of these drugs and the outcomes differences, which may be working both at the glucose and the insulin level, as well as the inflammation level, I think what we've shown is that you actually have a potential addition to the armamentarium for diabetes. Now, look, the trainers, the dietitians, all these guys are gonna say people are taking shortcuts. I think it should be part of a holistic lifestyle change, but honestly, it's not easy to just drop weight. And, you know, having you know, tried many diets myself with my patients, I can tell you that the problem is they constantly yo-yo. And the bottom line is they will lose weight on all these diets. Now the question is if they have diabetes or morbid obesity as indications, should these drugs be used in the protocol? Secondly, let's ask a bigger question that should they be used short term in people who need to be in front of a camera? And the question is, do they improve outcomes? I think the debate there is still ongoing. I think whatever you do, number one, consult a doctor before you do it and do it under specific instruction. In India, the subcutaneous injectable form of semi-glutide and Monjaro are not available per the FDA, but they are obtained through other means, through a doctor's prescription and through uh, import from outside. I think it's just a matter of time. They do have the oral form of, forms of those drugs though, used under diabetic indication. But I think what's becoming clear, talking to my endocrinologist friends, is it's not a simple puzzle and we found another weapon to use against diabetes, against morbid obesity, and in the right indication, something which may help us solve the metabolic syndrome issues that we're facing because it's very clear to me as a heart surgeon that I saw a lot of patients who were obsessed with food and who had real issues with diabetes and heart disease and honestly came in in the nick of time to save their lives only to have them go back to their old habits. And perhaps having this as an adjuvant might be useful while they develop better lifestyles and healthier things. But honestly, is it any different than some of the diabetic medications that they're already taking for lifetimes in small doses? And can you prove to me substantively that there's a adverse effect if they're not having it. And in fact, in those same patients, if you have decreased morbidity from cardiovascular complications and kidney complications, who's gonna debate that? This is no longer a portion of ozempic face and uh, guts which are solidified. I hope you appreciate the points I've taken. So what are the practical problems? Getting the drug is the practical problem. In India, it's not prescribable because they don't carry it in the normal pharmacies. You have to order it from abroad with a doctor's prescription and get it in and use it off-label. In the US, it's in short supply because everyone and their brother wants it, and most of it's for cosmetic reasons, but honestly, I don't, does it matter? If someone's suffering from obesity or morbid obesity and they just can't get a handle on it, this could be the adjunct. But the biggest thing is, and I think it's short-term, production, and then the secondary to that is the cost. They need to knock down the cost, so this is available for everyone in the US on Medicare um, and other such things for patients who are on Medicare or through insurance, because insurance doesn't always cover it, and it can be thousands of dollars in the US and uh, thousands of rupees in India. And so those are the real practical concerns. As far as dispensing the drug, the dispensers are incredibly, uh, well constructed and you know most of these patients are taking it once a week subcutaneously like they would with any other uh, insulin injection and honestly a lot of these guys who take it their blood sugars and their hemoglobin a1c's have gone down significantly and then the other benefits which we've talked about the downsides the cost the side effect profile is not zero and so you have to be monitored on this and then finally um, just how long to take it um, but studies are showing long-term that you can tolerate it and that the effects are there and they do not have significant uh, negative effects. In fact, positive effects were seen in those studies. I hope you appreciate the points I've taken um, to, into account. We've left the four articles which I've talked about in this video in the description and I hope you take the time to read them. I would love to have a 
lively debate with anyone and everyone on these topics because I think the data is now starting to come in with hard scientific evidence, not just foo-foo medicine, where people are taking this for, you know, basically going in front of a camera, but they're actually taking it for real reasons. And oh, by the way, going in front of the camera does help them as well. And maybe if they have a family history of diabetes or have other indications, it would be appropriate. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, please like, subscribe, and share, and support the channel. My teams and I work so hard to bring you the information and it's for love. It's so that you guys get healthy with us and you can be with me, my family and my, my friends for a hundred years. And that's the main reason I do this. So don't forget to support the channel and stay tuned for more such episodes. Thanks for joining us.